Hey, uh, it's Kane Hodder, better known as Jason, Leatherface, Victor Crowley. You're watching Slashing Cast. Keep watching or I'll do this to you. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the game video. Uh, I have to introduce ourselves, I guess. My name is Riley. My name is Nick. Because we're audio only here. And the only reason we're audio only is because we're in a hotel room right now in Austin, Texas. And we didn't exactly bring a lot of camera equipment with us. So I hope some gameplay footage and some event footage holds you over i know you want to see our faces it's tough it's the worst part we get a comment at least once per video to say i don't want to see your ugly faces where's the gameplay so you're welcome and then we also get one that says omg you're so hot text me <laughs> at and then a whatsapp number <laughs> Uh, okay, so yeah, we were just at, for those that don't know, the pre-release party of the Text Chainsaw Massacre, the game. And what this was, it was an event in Austin, Texas, in the middle of this brutal heat wave they're going through. It was 100 degrees out here in this warehouse where press and content creators could come and meet Gun Interactive and Sumo Nottingham. And a little bit of a surprise to most, a lot of talent was there. Uh, Kane Hodder was there. Scott Taylor Compton was there. Uh, Sean Whalen was there. Sean Whalen was there. You had... Uh, Ed Neal. Ed Neal was there. That was a real surprise. I didn't think... Ever. Kim Henkel was there. Yeah. That was huge. So, yeah, you have the mocap actors are there. Like, there was so many people there. Um, everyone that has devoted their life to this game for the last three, year, three years, a lot of people showed up. So, that was super cool. That alone made the event worth it 100%. It was worth traveling down here, uh, you know, paying for the flights and whatnot and... Yeah, that made it worth it, yeah, 100%. It was, yeah, it was great. But, uh, of course, you could actually play the game, and we'll talk about that soon. But I did actually just want to give the event details first, what this event was. Uh, so you show up. Like I said, it's at a warehouse kind of in the you know random area in South Austin, Texas. Uh, I originally thought it was going to be at like a big event center. And I'm actually really glad it wasn't. It's just a medium to little event center. Yeah, it's just it's it's a little warehouse, and that made it so much more casual and more intimate. And it was I think it was way better than doing some huge event center and you know like a hotel banquet hall or something. Yeah, uh, this felt way more intimate and, and more like TCM. Yeah, yeah. If anything, uh, so you show up, you're it's, you know gravel road, and they got the van out there. They got a nice, uh, very accurate replica. Of the original van from the film. And then, of course, there's a wheelchair inside of it. They got the blood symbol that the hitchhiker puts on it there. So that was really cool. Just a, a little thing. You get a photo op opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, that's just outside. And you walk in. And uh, right to your left when you go in is the, a ton of barbecue. A ton of drinks. You know, all free. Delicious barbecue. Drinks were delicious, ultimately, but they were so damn strong. They were strong. Yeah, so if you were a lightweight, you were gone in one or two drinks. It was, it was, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was fun. Yeah, so there were a, quite a few content creators out there. I'm not throwing anybody under the bus, but there were some people that got a little lit. <laughs> Their names were Slash and Cast. <laughs> Nick and Riley at Slash and Cast got a little carried away. <laughs> um, actually, I'm proud of myself. I, despite having like five old fashions, I did. I felt like I retained myself way better than I have on streams in the past. So I would have drank more if it wasn't so hot in there yeah. and outside. I think I just sweat all my liquor out. That's why I never got drunk for real. <laughs> I think that's all that happened there. Uh, yeah. So they had like a, the souvenir table, um, which so it, they gave a little package to cr press and creators. It has a nugget, a little stuff nugget. That's the coolest thing ever. He, it's cute. It clucks. I yeah. love it. And uh, then, you know, a, a t-shirt, some really cool enamel pins, a koozie, koozie and then a, a, a nice hand signed uh, postcard from all everyone at gun. Yeah. I like that. That was nice. That was nice. I framed that thing up. That, that was cool. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's just a nice little bonus there. So after you get past the drinks and liquors, they have the stations over on the left side of the building. There's 14 of them. Uh, it's all on like Xbox dev kits. So, uh, you're actually playing on a controller. You're not limited to mouse and keyboard. They're all. It was all standing stations. Yes. So you didn't actually get to sit down, and like you know, get really immersed in there and whatnot. But uh, and it was a little bit hard to hear because it, this is a warehouse and you're sitting there and you're. They had like Astro A40s, but there's a lot of talking, a lot yes. of drunk people. 
So it was a little bit hard to hear. So, you know, sound is pretty important in that game. Yeah. So that kind of made it tough. But uh, it, playing the game itself was a bit of a tougher experience inside of there just because of this, the environment that you're in. Yeah. It made it fun because you still you're standing right next to everyone you're playing with. You're all in an Xbox party together, so family and victims could hear each other. Yeah. So, yeah. I was surprised uh to to hear and see on on social media how many people uh content creators that came to the event actually didn't get into the tech test. Right, we're playing for the first time ever. Yeah. So that it was it was fun to see their reactions and hear their reactions. They're screaming and yelling yeah. and Yeah. All and, that. And actually for that reason we uh, we didn't play a ton of games because it it wasn't fair and I you know, flex on you, but because of the amount of time put into the tech test, you're playing with people that haven't played before. You're just, you're going to beat the crap out of them. Uh, so, I, and you know, if you haven't played before, if you didn't get to play the tech test, you deserve the opportunity to play it here. Right. Yeah. Uh, so there were a lot of people trying to play. I want to make sure everyone got their opportunity and it seemed like everyone did. It seemed to work out pretty well. Yeah. Uh, so the big thing in there inside of this warehouse is they actually built a quarter scale version maybe quarter scale maybe a little bit bigger it's kind of it was pretty damn big of the family house so a, a actual like replica looking version of the family family house that you could walk inside of you could see the the iconic window you could inside there's the dining table there's the skeleton lamp that you love and that was kind of it like it was it, there wasn't much you could actually like do inside of the house but who cares you look at the house and you walk inside the house and that's that in and of itself is so cool. Yeah. They had, they, I mean, a lot of people did photo ops opportunities right, exactly. there. Uh, they had the chainsaw there and some chains and yeah. other stuff for, uh, for photos. Yeah. Nugget was right outside the door and Walking. it was actually an anim, it was an animatronic nugget. Yeah. Like the wings would move and flap and stuff. I was like, damn. Yeah. I want that nugget. I want that. I mean, I'm not satisfied with my little stuffed nugget, but I also want <laughs> that nugget. Um, so that was really cool for sure. And, and like, even they have a, they had a digital backdrop that was actually the clouds of Texas, like legitimate, accurate footage. Yeah. So that's cool. It's a little things, you know, mm -hmm. and then a couple other, you know, backdrop photo op opportunities where it's like, uh, this, the red wall that, you know, behind the sliding door in the living room yep. uh, or in the hallway that was, they have that backdrop. And then there's a typical like TCM logo backdrop for photo ops. So, yeah. Other than that, that was it. It was mainly a social event. Yeah. As it was supposed to be. And it was it was awesome. It was a blast. Yeah. Uh, I was sad that it ended. Time flew. Yeah, it was a really, really fast five hours. And yeah, I was sad that it ended. So many great people there. So many great content creators. And of course, uh, the team themselves behind it. It was just cool talking to all of them and seeing their passion. And you know, with the last three to four years of work. Is finally coming to a full circle here for them. Yeah, and hearing from uh from the guys at Sumo, you know, at hearing their their voices and their the passion in their voice yeah. and their eyes, uh, rather than you know just text in a in a tweet or whatever. Yeah. That that was really really awesome to see. Yeah, and that's something what that I really really like about Sumo Nottingham is, and I said this to as many people at Sumo as I could, because Gun we know they are horror fans. They get down to the nitty gritty. They get every tiny little detail from the IP and they get it into the game. We saw it with F-13. We knew it was going to happen with Texas. What I'm so impressed with is Sumo is matching their energy. Yep. Like they are doing the same thing. They are real horror fans and they're uh, really enjoying pulling off those details like that. Yeah, so Sumo, Nottingham, and Gun, they just make a perfect team. Yeah. It's the perfect team to be working on a game like this together. And uh, that was 1,000% confirmed after meeting all of them at this event. Mm-hmm. So, uh, at the very least, you know you're in, in great hands. Uh, okay, let's talk about the game content itself. So, the game itself, it, it was the as close to the launch version that you're going to get. Yep. There, Johnny and Sissy were in there. Uh, the meta game was in there. The gas station was in there. Different times of day was in there. Uh, so, we're going to give you as many details as we possibly can here. Uh, obviously we can't give you every little nitty, every single perk, every single cosmetic, because you only got to play so long. There were hundreds of people out at the end of the day that yeah. were trying to get in and play this game. So you can't just sit there and hog it from them and not start the game and go through all the medic. I, I would right. love to do that. Believe me, but we couldn't do that. Uh, so we'll just talk about things that were clear to us, things that we can confirm for you. And, uh, let's start first with the maps. Uh, 
I, I, we talked about this like 10 times mm-hmm. that it sounded like they were no longer going to have variant times on each map, but they are. Yeah. Uh, that's now legitimately officially confirmed. So the family house, there is a night and a dawn version. The slaughterhouse, there is a day and a dusk version. So no night version over the slaughterhouse. And then the gas station is at day and at night. Yeah. Yeah. So. I will say I'm I'm very very happy that there's not a night version of the slaughterhouse. I was I was worried about that, and when we walked in there, people were talking about the family house at night and the gas station at day and night. I was like, oh no, the slaughterhouse can't be at night. That'll be that'll be so hard to play there at night. Um, but no, they did uh, day and dusk, not dawn, but dusk. So you get the sun setting. That's fun. That's fun. Yeah. I, I, all around the maps look gorgeous whether it's day or night they they looked amazing the gas station is its own entity we don't we only got to play on it once but there yeah there's a good reason why uh why it wasn't in the tech test it is different yeah it's 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 its whole other puzzle to solve and you have to be way smarter together as a family and luckily our time playing there was with so hinky who's a try hard like us yep uh, so that really helped us get through that easily but yeah you have to you have to really be ready to stop everyone from actually getting to the gas station itself. Uh, the basement is smaller. The outside is way more important on that map. Yes. So you have to be ready to navigate that and have it trapped up. And it was just, it was a lot to take in on the first gameplay. So that's a whole other map to learn. Uh, and even though the basement was smaller, I was playing Leatherface there and I found it. I, I was lost fast. I was lost fast on all the maps, to be fair, but I, I don't know. I was just like struggling to figure out where the hell I was going in that basement. Yeah, I was I was lost on the outside. I was playing the hitchhiker, and uh, and so Hinky was sissy. Um, and yeah. yeah, I'm like, where do I go? Where's the generate? Where's this? Where's that? It was really confusing. And then adding the night to it, plus being so close to a huge TV screen, yeah, it was it was it was, it was pretty difficult. First yeah. first first games difficult. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and being just in an in an environment like that as well. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was it was tricky. It was tricky trying to figure that map out. It took you guys like six minutes just to find the generator to turn it on, yep. uh, just to prepare to stop the victims. We did win. Yeah, we yeah, clean we, sweep. Yeah, we did get a clean sweep, of but course. <laughs> it purely came out of someone being even more confused than we were. So yeah, I think I think the person that I ended up killing. Um, they as soon as i swiped them she like ran like two steps and then stops like she was expecting me to do like a dead by daylight you know kind of cool down animation and that yeah. wasn't that wasn't it i just kept swinging yeah yeah learning curves learning curves uh but since you mentioned uh, sissy and, and john it was sissy and hitchhiker this was something we figured out that is it's really cool and it reiterates just how important it is to work as a team in this game sissy can actually go up to generators and use her poison and put a poison right on the generator yep. but she can also put poison on the hitchhiker's traps so if you get trapped by that you also get hit with poison at the same time so even if you get out of the trap you're still gonna f- take damage from that poison yeah and and then you can do things in the metagame we'll talk about i mean let's just jump to metagame let's talk about it so the metagame i think is going to result in a very very difficult balancing situation yes i think sumo nottingham is going to have their hands full trying to figure out how to balance this game out once that meta game is in play and you get the tryhards of the world figuring out you know all these perks all these abilities how to use them to a very uh, annoying way i think it's going to be very hard us included oh gonna... in... well, yeah of course, of course. <laughs> i'm the problem it's me <laughs> but the, of course that's what's going to happen that's what's going to happen in games like this so at the base level with no metagame it was a pretty balanced experience yes but i think when that metagame is there i don't know i don't even sure who it goes in favor of because the grandpa perks are their own other thing it's, it's yeah. there's so much going on there but so everybody first of all you get three perks to pick from and those perks also have levels to them and by playing the game and earning xp while using those perks those perks level up and they become even more powerful Uh, and then you have you do the same thing with your actual ability which so for sissy it's the poison ability she can you know spray a poison spit out a poison and uh, basically make victims delirious yeah and and slow them down and make it hard for them to see okay well 
she has the ability to go to her skill tree and add just three levels to her ability that she can unlock over time. And you actually get to pick and modify on via a tree exactly the modifications you want to your ability. Mm -hmm. And you can make it where that there was one of them for Sissy where her poison would last for 55 seconds. That is <laughs> 55 seconds. Hitchhiker had it where it would do 28% more damage when you step in a trap. It was cr like crazy stuff. Yeah. Uh, Sunny had an ability where uh, and it was just a level up. It's just leveling up his ability. This is not, this is separate from perks where you could, uh, if somebody got within one meter of you, anyone in the family member or anyone in the family, the entire team was alerted and could see where he was. It, it's just stuff like that. It, it's There is so much going on yeah. for each character. And so you have the perks as one thing, but then you also have your ability and that skill tree. So it's it's going to be hectic. Yeah, it's very, uh, very not convoluted, complex, I guess yeah. is a better word. Very complex. Yeah, it, it is super in-depth, and it's going to lead to a ton of replayability because of the grinding because you have to – actually level up your perks mm -hmm. they have three unique levels and then your ability has the levels so you're constantly grinding for stuff and that's for each character too yep it, i love that i that's what f13 was missing and this game just you know hits out of the ballpark for what i'm seeing so far yeah i mean you look at any of the other uh you know asymmetrical multiplayer games that are no longer with us they they didn't have uh, this progression system this yeah this grindy something to grind for yeah it, it's it's gonna be intense and i am still worried about the balancing that's gonna come as a result of yeah that meta game and those abilities but yeah it's uh it's gonna be really really cool to see for sure mm -hmm. and it's gonna be a lot of fun just to grind away yeah now the next the really the last big thing here that we still really didn't get a taste of we didn't get to play with it but we got to see them was grandpa's perks okay now my biggest complaint when the tech test, I, I was that grandpa was kind of useless until mm -hmm. he hit level five. Yeah. Once people understood how grandpa worked, they would just stay still and he, he do nothing yeah. until he was maxed out, which it was pretty hard to max him out. It would take time with perks. It's a whole other ball game. So mm -hmm. each family member can pick a perk to add that affects grandpa directly. And there's quite a few of them and we have every single one of them. So we're going to go through all of them right now for you. Uh, start from the bottom here. Always in sync. Okay. When active, the family focus ability duration is increased and the cooldown is reduced. So you're even, you're seeing people longer and you're able to do it more often. So yeah. these, by the way, these get better as it goes on. Yeah. Uh, Cause you have to unlock each of these perks as you go. Whole other level to your grinding. But once you do get them, there's a few in here that are crazy to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, the next one's called Animal Farm. It increases the chicken detection radius. Okay. Thank you, Nugget. Uh, barge to the point. Barging doors always opens them on the first try. That's good if you have a certain play style where you are just, okay, I found you. I'm going to follow you until I get you. Yeah, if you're going against a victim team, that is actually good at latching doors, mm -hmm. which I, they might be kind of rare. But if they're there, you I mean you just go right through those things. Yep, no problem. And they basically will never be able to keep you away from chase. Uh, brute strength slightly increases melee damage for all family members, just slightly. There's no percent there. So I wonder if that's just not finished, like right. it's not finished, or or if it's just going to be a undefined percentage. Yeah. And any of these could change, by the way. Oh you know? yeah, of course. Still got two months. Still got two months. Uh, next one's called Nobody Escapes Hell. Door unlock mini games are 40% harder for all victims. Hmm. That's one of those, man, like you're getting bum rushed over and over again. Whip that thing out. Slow everybody down. <laughs> oh, man. Th that's a game changer. <laughs> I wonder how it works with Connie's ability. If it also slows that down by 40%. Um, I would assume so. I, I don't see why not, but yeah, man, it's already... If you're a certain victims, like Leland, for example, it doesn't exactly go very fast when unlocking oh. doors. And to pull that down into 40%, that would be rough. Uh, the next one is called Exterior Alarms. When active, all critical doors and gates are highlighted for five seconds if opened. Another huge one. Mm -hmm. Like, 
there were a lot of times when you would completely miss somebody escaping because they opened a the door quietly and you said no idea. Yep. So that thing opens, it gets highlighted. You're like, oh, there you go. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully it's not too late. Yeah, and it, it, critical doors, how, you know, how picky are you on that? So it would be like, does a critical door become one if the lock puts his, or if the cook puts his lock on it? Probably. So I'm just, you know, things like that. Yeah, it could be extremely powerful. Yeah. Uh, experienced stalkers reduces the family's proximity warning range for victims. Uh, we talked about proximity a lot. In proximity, if you turn your HUD off and you no longer see it, it makes the game completely different and yeah. way harder. Yeah. So to have that basically be reduced via perk, that could be extremely powerful as well, depending on how much. Yeah. I mean, working on a mini game or or just you know running around thinking about uh, if you should go left or right when you should be looking behind you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's that's one that could definitely come in handy. Especially with your with people like Sissy, yeah, like hiding in hiding spots and just kind of creeping out <sighs> with that perk in play, that could be pretty tough. Uh, excited Grandpa delay between Grandpa's sonar pulse is reduced by twenty percent at each level, which I think they're saying it every time he levels up, it goes down another twenty percent. So he would basically be in like two times speed by max level, <laughs> and he's already fat. Yeah, you you basically would be able to know where everybody's at at all times. Or they, you know, or they're just stuck wherever they're at. Yeah. Well, if he's max level, it doesn't even matter. Well, yeah. He's that's on true. you. He's on you. Yeah. So um, I don't think I'll ever use that one, but it could be pretty useful. Uh, the next one's called "Don't Have All Day." Stamina drain while sprinting is decreased by twenty percent. Imagine that with the cook, you yeah. know, and a character like that. Characters that are uh, more scout kind of, where they're kind of tracking, and their stamina's not as good. That could be a huge perk for them. Yeah. Now, the, I think these next four, the last four, I think these are crazy. I mean, th- these are like potentially game-breaking perks here. Potentially. The next one's called Swinging for the Fences. It reduces stamina consumption on melee attacks by 40%. Uh, do you remember how bad it was playing as a cook and you take two swings and you get pissed off because you lost your stamina? Yeah. yeah. Forty. That's that's like two more swings. Yeah. That could, that could be huge. Let him cook. Let him cook. The hitchhiker had the same problem. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you uh, you finally catch up. You get one swing in, and then you run out of stamina. It'd be so much better. If you put a perk on that, like that, and you could. It could be the difference between getting a kill and not getting a kill. Yeah, for sure. Uh, okay, the last, next one. It's called Well Fed Youngins. Whenever Grandpa's sonar is activated, all family members instantly gain fifty stamina. So you're in the middle of a chase. Grandpa roars. You were about to run out of stamina. Boom. You're back up to 50%. Yeah, I wonder Yeah, I wonder if that's supposed to be 50% or if there is a value. Oh, an yeah. Unknown Interesting. Value. I just, in, my brain instantly went 50%. I, I assume it, you know, these these perks aren't finished. We weren't able to use them in right. this build. So I'm sure there's tweaking the values and I'm sure they, they missed a percent in there. Or there is just some undefined value of what your stamina bar is for each character that we don't know. Yeah, well, if you assume it's 50%, that would be pretty damn big. Yeah. So, uh, and our last two here, I think these two are the most powerful by far, okay? You got well, well, well. Victims that jump down wells take 50% more damage. That's huge. That would probably, in cart, they'll be down every single time they go down a well. Yeah, at least in, in my experience, you, you can usually get a hit off on them. Uh, one swing yeah. before they jump down a well so they, they'll be incapacitated. Yeah, and people, even by the end of the tech test, were figuring out where those well locations were, mm-hmm. and yeah, that's, you're probably screwed. That would be huge. Yeah. And then you're forcing people to use heals and recover, and even yeah, if they're incapacitated, they had to take the time to get up and recover. So yeah, I think that's going to be used a lot. Because yeah. wells were getting abused, man. People were using the hell out of those wells. They were. And the last one, this one is going to be big too, called Wind Doom. Wind Doom victims take 50% more damage when jumping out windows. Everyone that's playing at the family house over and over again, a lot of people were just just bull rushing and jumping out that window. All right, well, here's 50% more damage. Good luck. Yeah, you better hope that the, the cook has a lock on that door and... You can recover fast enough just to 
just to get away. From my recollection, at least playing as uh, certain victims, it was taking like 75% of your health. Yeah. So that, with that perk in play, assuming that they don't have counter perks that are giving them more health, right? that would down you. Yeah. Every full, time. Full health to down, jumping through one window. Like, damn. That is rough. Yeah. And you, you can, you know, use the upstairs window in the house. You know, that's even worse. I will say that perk... This is everything's gonna be game to game. That perk doesn't work very well in the slaughterhouse. There's really nowhere to jump from a window in a slaughterhouse. Right. And I the gas station I didn't see while we were there, but maybe there is, but I don't know. It was hard to navigate, man. <laughs> yeah, it was. So I think that might be a perk you throw on specifically when you go to the family house. Which this is another cool thing about this game. It so I'm gonna compare it to Dead by Daylight for a second. Dead by Daylight, although maps do make a difference on how you play and they are diff the obstacles can be different and whatnot but at the end of the day every map is going to have your t walls every map is going to have your l walls and you're going to know a loop you're going to know a pallet you're going to know how the, it's going to always have the killer shack it's going to always have this and that so you know how to loop you know how to navigate you run in with the same perks that you always want to use every time mm -hmm. okay tcm and the what these perks are doing and the way the maps are laid out you will pick your perks and your loadouts which there are different loadouts. You can pre-save your loadouts, by the way. Yep. Um, you will change based on where you're at, based on the time of day, based on who you're going against. Like you're gonna pick your perks in the pre-game lobby yeah. just based on where you're going. Yeah. That is so cool to me. I don't. I don't think any asymmetrical multiplayer game has brought something like that to the table up, up to this point. No. No. Not at all. It's. It's dope, and I'm sure there are gonna be different perks for for teamwork. So even, yeah, depending on who you, what characters you're playing with uh, as teammates will uh, will affect your loadout as well. Yeah. I mean, God, like that is, that's just something so cool and it's so unique. And I, while I am still worried about balancing when it comes to this metagame, it, it, this is another key to the puzzle right here. Mm -hmm. It's another piece of the puzzle that's going to make this all come together because you are going to have to play differently every single time you play. Yep. And you... Often, if your character is picked, you have to play a different character now. And you probably won't be able to play the same person over and over and over again. You'll have to change all the time. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's going to be really interesting to see all the different loadouts for all your different characters and, and try to adapt. You know, you, you play one character that's your main, but oh, they're already picked and the person won't, won't give it up. Um, so you can pick another character, but have perks tuned to kind of fit that other character's playstyle that's your main. Yeah, it's there's a lot going on there. <laughs> and then if you're, let's say, okay, we're going to a night map now. I want it to be where it's even harder for me to be seen in the shadows. Mm -hmm. So I, I make a perk set that makes it harder to be seen in the shadows, or I'm more quiet going through crawl spaces or, or opening certain things and... You can just make your builds preset loadouts that are made specifically for each map at each time of day. Yeah. That just excites the hell out of me. <laughs> just figuring out metas like that, uh, I can't wait to actually dive into the, the full game at launch and just figure that shit out. Yeah. And damn, I'm excited to see Grandpa <sighs> B.O.P. Let's go, Grandpa. Yeah, Grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that was pretty much it. That was the the event. It was uh, fun to play again. It was fun to see so many other excited content creators. And it was certainly fun to see the people that made this thing kind of just sit back and take in all their work and everybody just enjoying the hell out of it in front of them. Yeah, yeah. That was... I, I hope they had fun. I know it was very stressful putting on an event, but... Yeah, in the middle of this heat, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, the heat definitely made it worse. Uh, worse, but... All, all your work is so much appreciated by everyone who went. Yeah, and if you if you are listening out there, any, any guys that that worked on this thing and around that event, uh, one just thank you for inviting us. Yes, uh, I know it was supposed to be like a lot of local creators, but I was honored to you know buy a plane ticket and come down and be a part of this and be able to share it with everyone that's watching right now. It was awesome. It was a great time, mm -hmm. and I'm just excited for freaking launch, man. I gotta wait another two damn months again. It's gonna be coming up quick, and it's gonna be also taking forever. 
I know. Such a weird place to be. Yeah. Uh, but uh, hey, that's pretty much it. Uh, that was the pre-release party. It's not like you you missed something crazy gameplay wise, you know. But you still, it was pretty damn cool, and it was a lot of fun to be a part of. Uh, but hey, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like and subscribe to our channel for more updates like this one. And of course, as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.